Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Delana Maul. Maul like Darth Maul, but with an E. The E is silent though, but I'm not. And I'm just reminiscing about my time on Tinder. Sorry, had to pause the video for a moment. I need you guys to do me a favor. If you are looking for some really cute gold jewelry, I need you to go to the link in my description and shop Anna Luisa. I have these cute ear cuffs now. I got one on both sides. I'm so happy about it because I can't get any more piercings in my ears. I create a lot of scar tissue, got it for my genetics. It's okay though, because I have these adorable ear cuffs that uh, balance out the look I'm going for. I am in Ana Luisa earrings all the time. All my hoops, all my huggies, ear cuffs. Water don't stop me, they're tarnish free. It's really unmatched quality. Like these are very affordable for me. I've had affordable pieces before that have turned my neck and my ears green. And I don't have to worry about that with Ana Luisa. They have designs that start at like $39. Oh, and did I mention the free shipping? So like, why not? Go ahead and click the link and shop and follow me on Instagram if you guys want to see my favorites and shop my specific favorite list of my Ana Luisa earring. Oh yeah, and there's a two year warranty on all the products and returns and everything are super easy. So like, no excuses, especially since holiday time is coming up. Please use the link and help me make some money so I can buy some more jewelry. Don't wait, shop high quality, affordable jewelry. Get 30% off while you still can. Use the link in my description. Before my last relationship, I actually did try dating apps and I was on Bumble for like two minutes, but I didn't like the usability and everything. So I was off that fairly quickly. Um, but I was on Tinder. I knew what Tinder was, but this is still like the evolution of it from being what a dating app to just a fucking app. So I think I was still, I was on there around the safe zone before it became strictly like just people looking to have sex. I went on four dates from being on Tinder and I don't think my time on Tinder was that bad. Like none of the dates themselves were bad. I just didn't have a particularly like great outcome for all of these. All these dudes <laughs> have very normal names. So I don't think I have to change any names. Well, I'm gonna have to change two names. That one's not, I don't even remember the name of the last guy. Huh. Nope, don't remember his name. He was the one I was hoping for too. After I took some uh, time to be single and started dating, I had got a puppy and I was just trying new things. And I was in my early 20s, I was like 22. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna try to get out and I'm gonna try to date. So I hop on Tinder, I play around. And this is before I actually learned how to take uh, really good pictures. But you know, I still got, I still got attention. I'm cute. The first dude, that I matched with, he was 6'10". It said 6'10 in his profile. The pictures weren't that great, but I'm like, I'm not a stickler for height. I think I still do want taller than me, but it, it doesn't, you don't gotta be over six foot or nothing. It's not like that, but this man was 6'10". I'm 5'5". I just photographed taller. I get matched this dude. I think all my matches were in Philly except one no two matches were in philly two matches were somewhere else this guy did not have a car uh i talked to him for a little while and we set up a date we didn't do one of those like extended periods of talking because i was really just trying to do something normal and get out and actually go on dates without talking to someone for three months i know that sounds really bad especially because i went on my own <laughs> to i don't live in philly <laughs> don't worry i covered my bases a little bit I sent my best friend and my brother pictures of the guy I was going to meet, where I was going, what we were doing. So if something crazy did happen, at least there would be a trail. I drive up to this dude's house. He lives on one of those like really small side streets on the edge of the hood or whatever. One of those streets where I definitely pushed my button several times to indicate that the car was locked and armed. <laughs> so I get out. Oh, it's nighttime, by the way. We scheduled the date. Um, during the fall or winter, I don't remember. Fall or winter, it was cold. It wasn't freezing, it was cold, but the moon was up earlier. And I told them that I would come pick him up from his house because he didn't have a car. Now, first of all, I accepted the date, but me being the one that has the car and would have to do all the driving, 
in that he lives like 45 minutes away from me and I would be doing all the driving. I knew that wouldn't work out unless he would be like, oh, cool, I like you. I'm gonna get a car to come see you. That'd be nice. I go to his place, I park the car, and now I'm trying to find his door. I'm like, Delana, be cool. You're all right. Just let's do this. Find his door, I knock. Normal. Don't come to my house and knock on my door like the cops. If there's a doorbell, use it. I hate when people see the doorbell because everybody doorbell light up now. Why would you knock like the cops if you, you see the doorbell? I'm sorry, that bothers me. Anyway, I knock on the door and he opens it and the six tenness is just a slack. He doesn't really fit in his own door. So he opens it and I'm like, and I kid you not, the first thing I said was, where do you buy pants? Should that have been my opening line? Maybe not. <laughs> but that's, I have a tendency to, I have a tendency to do that. And he laughed a little bit and then invited me in. Now I'm just like checking over my shoulder. I'm peeking over. I'm, this sounds, when I'm saying it now, this sounds so dangerous to me, but this is normal. Like what am I supposed to do? Stand on the stoop? So I go in his house and he's like, yeah, I just want to change my pants or something and then we'll go. Feel free to have a seat. Now, he lives in like a small row house and I know that it's common for boys not to decorate. But his house was like suspiciously empty. Like the couch was up against the windows at the front. And then there was the TV and then clearly what is supposed to be a dining area, but it had nothing in it. There are no paintings. There's no table. There's no chairs. It's like couch, TV stand with TV, all in the front of the house. So I'm like, okay, another bachelor pad at work here. On the banister, when I came through the door was a cat. Now I love animals. If y'all follow me on Instagram or follow me here, you know I have a lot of pets. I love animals. There's a kitten sitting on the edge of the banister, but this kitten looks possessed. I don't know what kind of cat it was, but his fur, sorry, her fur, her fur was very uh, stringy. She looked like how Tom from Tom and Jerry looks when he gets shocked by lightning. It was a black cat, huge eyes that are fully dilated, Cat looks like it's gonna eat your soul, but it's not moving. When you walk in a room, cats respond. Ears move, eyes move, something. This cat looks like a statue at the end of the banister and is staring at me. It looks psychotic. And I'm just like, hey, kitty. I was like, flag, this man's cat's insane. So he comes back downstairs, he's dressed. He's not anything special. He's just in like nice sweatpants, a t-shirt and some nice shoes. Sneakers, not shoes, sneakers. And I tell him I'm taking him out to get ramen. So I look up the nearest ramen joint to his house. We went. I knew this place was legit because there was a lot of Asian people in it. That's how you know that a restaurant is good if the people that it caters to are f just all of it. Like there was a wait to get in. I forget what the place was called. And he's talking to me about how he's kind of still kind of new to anime. He's never had authentic ramen before. And I'm trying to put him on to the food and we're talking and we're doing just fine. We had good conversation at the restaurant. No particular spark or connection or anything. We get done eating. He paid for the food. I drive him back to his place. I pay for the parking for the car though. Drive back to his place. He's like, do you want to come in and hang out a while? And I'm like, eh, okay, I, I don't really have anywhere else to be. And I'm trying to actually like, get to know people as an adult because the relationship before this is all happening was a relationship I had in high school and college. I had no idea how to date as an adult. And this was me trying. So I go in his house, I sit on the couch and we put on Hajuku. Is that what it's called? Haiku, there we go, I was off by, yeah. We watched Haiku, which he had never watched before. And you know, he, he gave me the remote and I scrolled through everything he was watching on his Funimation or whatever app it was at the time. And I, so I was heavily judging him on what he had been watching. So we put on Haiku, we're watching it, we like it. The cat has now run across, guys, I'm back in the house. The cat's not on the banister when we came back. The cat's somewhere else. It's dark. He has like the living room set up in half of the living room space. So the rest of the house is like shadows. So it's like couch, TV, a lamp, 
and it's all curated into a small part of the first floor. Why? Don't know. So we're sitting there on the couch. He's all man spread out. You know how they get. And my, remember, he's 6'10", so he's going to take up a lot of space anyway. Big dude. Um, we're sitting there. His arm's kind of... It's not on me, but it's like a bat, uh, like across the back of the couch. And we're watching Haiku. And his cat, who was nowhere to be seen when we had arrived, now jets out of the shadows and scurries across the floor like a little heartless. And like jumps on the couch and then comes and sits like between like the space between him and I and I'm like all right either this cat is crazy or she's just really protective of her owner and I'm talking to him and now we're getting into details of the red flags start to show up other than the fact that he has like no furniture the the cat was the the animal's always a present for the ex-girlfriend but the ex-girlfriend never takes the animal um so the cat was like a present of the the ex-girlfriend, they haven't been broken up very long. Like, she just came and got the rest of her stuff, like, the, that day or the day before. And I'm like, uh, this is too fresh. I don't even, like, he's, the things he's telling me, saying that he still has a lot of story to be concluded with this other girl before he can move on. So I'm like, yeah, this ain't it. But this cat has now sat in between us. And I'm looking at it, and he goes, huh, that's interesting. Usually she just attacks people. And then just goes back to watching the show like he ain't saying what he said. And I'm just like, okay, okay. Now I have cats, you guys. I, I had several cats. I have a lot of cats in my life. And this was the only one I've ever been kind of nervous about. But at some point in the night, I think we watched like four episodes before I left, the cat does come down and kind of sit next to me and just kind of pushes like she she loafs and pushes her body up against mine. He's like genuinely confused on why this cat likes me. I think he was trying to use that as like a sign. But I was like, nah, not really going to work out. I already knew in my head that this wasn't it. This is just me. And I already knew that I was just playing a field here just trying to get myself get a feel for dating. The night ended. We said goodbye, there was no kiss or anything, just a hug, and I left and I went home. The date was okay, the cat was weird, but this guy was full of red flags. I think just, he was the most memorable because he was the tallest man I've ever met in person. This dude was huge, like, um, there was like this much space between the bottom of his pants and then his shoe. Like you say, he doesn't really find pants that fit anywhere. He was nice though. I give that date a uh, 6 out of 10. He was very polite. He paid for the meal. He invited me in. He wasn't inappropriate or promiscuous or anything like that. So 6 out of 10 for that date. But there was no connection. And I was not going to do all that driving. The next guy, we'll give him a name. We'll call him Matt. Matt was this small black guy. He, it wasn't that I was particularly a, attracted to him, but he asked me out. I said yes. Next guy's name was Matt. Uh, we messaged back and forth for a little while. He was very nice. He asked me out. I said yes. Once again, drove up to, to Philly. And I told him I would meet him for, he asked me to a movie. And I hadn't seen the Star Wars movie yet. It was when, like, the... Nah, it's not a reboot. I guess the next trilogy... When the new Star Wars movie had come out. The the, the latest new... Whatever. Uh, don't ask me to tell you the title. Um, so I'm like, yeah, I haven't seen the Star Wars, Star Wars movie. Let's do that. He invites me up to one of those, like, dining theater type things. This guy also does not have a car. So I drive up, I park, I walk to the theater, I get there before him because he's on the bus. And I go ahead, I buy our tickets because I was there first. I was just like, yeah, I'll get the tickets, it's fine. He comes in, he is small, skinny guy, but he opens his mouth and it was like Mufasa's voice. This little man had the deepest voice I've ever heard. And when he spoke, and I have travel controlling my face, so he spoke and I went, what? 
And he had a nice smile. He was he was very nice, but adjusting to the 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 voice and the body was just something for me. We go into the theater. He buys me a drink. He does pay me back for the ticket, by the way. He gives me the money for the ticket. He buys me a drink. We watch the movie. And I tell him I'll give him a ride home because it's late now. I don't know how long the bus has run, but it, I have the car. I give him a ride. So we're chatting, get to his house. I think we like sat in the car and talked for an hour. I don't know who he lives with or anything. He never invited me up or in. He never, that was none of that. We talked in the car again. I'm not like sexually attracted to him, but he was just like a nice person. So we talked for about an hour, day ended went home he did try to message me a few times ask after that and ask me out again but i was like eh, no again no car wasn't really attracted to him but he se- totally seemed like the type that i would be friends with though so he was cool we'll call this next guy jared um he was new to my area he had just moved here i forget from where i think he said like He moved from New Orleans or something up to my area for a job. And he was like a bodybuilder type gym dude. Uh, I asked him out and took him to a new, like a New Orleans style restaurant in my area. He said yes. And he met me there. There was nothing particularly uh, special or amazing about the day. We ate food. We talked. I told him about the area. I was like, if we would show you around, blah, blah, blah. Nothing particularly special about this guy. I clearly wasn't his type, though. We weren't feeling each other like that. So I let that go. What's funny about this dude, though, is that maybe six months or so later, he shows up at my gym. And I'm in class sitting with my friends, and I'm like, yo, I think I know that guy. I think I went out on a date with him. He did recognize me. He didn't remember my name, but no one remembers my name. And he ended up being a gym mate for about six months or so after that it was just awkward him having shown up to my gym and me telling just i quickly went to my uh boyfriend at the time and was like yo just let you know i went on a date with that guy that's it he was just okay nothing crazy happened just good communication being had okay okay last dude last dude this dude, oh my gosh, he was so close to what I was looking for. He had nice tattoos. He had the muscles. He liked working out. He watched anime. He was a chef. And I was like, yes. Okay. So I asked him out as well. Even if they're not into me, these guys are really nice and say yes. Because they never, I guess you never know if you're truly into somebody. But he said yes. He was looking for ramen spots to go to. And I was like, I got you. Of course he was, he wants to go out to eat my favorite food. I was like, this is great. How do I get this man? I give him the address of my local ramen joint. He meets me there. I get there early. I'm a little nervous because this guy, as far as like how I felt before the actual date was the one I liked the most. Like he was checking a lot of boxes. Once again, by the way, for all these dates, I did give where I was going, what I was doing, and a picture of who I was going to meet to my best friend and my brother, just in case anything pops off. So I meet him there, we're talking about anime, we're eating the ramen, but you can tell there's no, like he just, another one that seems like, oh, you'd be a really cool friend. Do you wanna go to like meet at Otakon or something? Like I'm meeting a bunch of cool dudes who I would totally be friends with, but no one who I would have a relationship with. He was so cute, so cute. But in our conversations, he did tell me that he's a little more religious. His father's like a pastor or something. I was like, yeah, we don't get that in common because my grandfather was a reverend. So I was like, oh, yeah, I get that. But he's a little more religious than I am. And he had like mommy issues. He was like a pastor dad and a drug addict mom. And the way he was talking about it, he he knew he wasn't healed from his mommy issues. And I was like, I do not know how to be with a man with mommy issues like this. I was like, ooh, this would be new. Again, he wasn't into me. He was, I did run into him once at an MMA event. He was working security. And me and him, once again, had no problem talking and having a decent dialogue, but we totally, it wasn't, it wasn't there. 
No idea where any of these dudes are now. All these dates were like seven years ago. Will I ever be back on Tinder? I don't know. I don't think I want to. I'm too old. I feel like I'm too old to be on Tinder. Those were all my Tinder dates. Nothing crazy. I don't just sit at home and I know I gotta get back out there. It might not be that bad. It was a decent time. It's just you think, you hope the apps can really weed out everything first. Maybe that's why people talk for so long, because it's like, let me get all the little details before I even try to subscribe to this nonsense. Let me know about your Tinder experiences in my comment section. I love to hear other people's stories, because mine, fairly boring, but the things I've heard from other people, it's great. TV show worthy, even. I'm just a little more boring. If you did enjoy this story time, though, please hit the like button. Please subscribe. I really wanted to grow this channel and I hope someone gets a laugh out of these stories. Thanks for watching.